What is up, my friends? You are very welcome along to the second last transfer news roundup of this transfer window. As I'm sure you're well aware, the window in Europe slams shut at 11 p.m. UK and Irish time tomorrow, and I will be live from 6 p.m. tomorrow on Friday, right the way through to the time the window closes. So if you want to come and join us for that, you know where we'll be. Also, thank you to those who have hit the subscribe button. As you can see, we've got to 210,000 subscribers. Wouldn't get there without your help. And thank you for all of that. Uh, so I'm going to talk over the next 8 to 10 minutes. And I'm going to ask you guys to always let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Drop a like on the video. And of course hit that subscribe button. Let's start off with the good news. The good news is that Ryan Gravenberch will be a Liverpool player by the time the window closes tomorrow. Uh, there was a flight scheduled to come over tonight from Munich. That flight has been cancelled, but no need to fear. It's not because there's an issue with the deal or anything. He will be travelling over first thing in the morning, and then I would imagine the formalities of a medical and all that stuff will be happening. So, interestingly though, even though the flight from Munich over here was cancelled, there was a flight that was going in the other direction. So maybe some of the Liverpool executives are going over to finalise some of the deals with uh, Bayern Munich or something, I don't know. But Ryan Grafenberg will be a Liverpool player. The fee is somewhere between 40 and 45 million euro so i'll let you get your old calculators out i think it's about 36 to 38 million pounds something like that uh, and this is a target that jürgen klopp has long wanted now i've been honest i've said he wouldn't have been at the very top of my list of priorities but i've also always said i want who the manager wants and the manager clearly wanted ryan gravenberg so welcome to liverpool football club ryan gravenberg and i will be getting right behind him there is a, an interesting, I think it was Melissa Reddy put out a piece that said Jurgen Klopp initially had three targets long term. One of them was, of course, Jude Bellingham. The other one was Arlie and Shuameni. And number three on that list, in no particular order, was Ryan Gravenberch. And we have landed one of those targets. So, as I said, welcome to Liverpool Football Club, Ryan Gravenberch. Will he play as a natural number six for us? I don't believe he will. I think Stefan Bajcetic and Endo are going to be what we would regard as a defensive midfielder. And Gravenberch, who knows? Who knows? But Klopp will have a plan. Will he play as a six and a half? Will he play as an eight? Will we change system? I don't know. But I like the idea of Jurgen Klopp having good headaches, selection headaches in a good way. And the midfield rebuild has been completed. There is a glaring exception, and that is, of course, the fact that we haven't signed a centre-back in this window. And I'm going to move on to speak about that in a moment. But if you look at the midfield rebuild, a 22-year-old Dominic Sobotslai, a 24-year-old Alexis McAllister, a 21-year-old Ryan Gravenberch. Yes, an outlier in Endo, and a 30-year-old uh, coming in. Or 30, is he 30 or 31? I can't remember. Coming in. But we've also got young Stefan Bajcetic, who, very young and again showed no signs of anything other than brilliance when he played last season so i'm happy with that but there are exceptions as we said we haven't got in the center back jürgen klopp has spoke all window about wanting a center back so here's what i think has happened i like to believe that jürgen klopp has said okay we could go out and sign a center back but i like what i'm seeing with jaro kwanza and if that's the case I've no issues with that whatsoever. I'm looking forward to Jurgen Klopp's uh, press conference tomorrow ahead of the Villa game where I hope he comes out and says that. We looked at centre-back options in the market, but between the minutes he played against Newcastle and between the pre-season he had, maybe Jurgen Klopp really does believe in Kwanzaa. And if that is the case, I'm absolutely behind it. And I understand the decision 100%. If it isn't the case, then there's more questions, right? But we may never know that. So I'm interested to see if we do hear from Jurgen tomorrow about the centre-back situation. Now obviously we know that Virgil van Dijk and Ibrahim Akanadi won't be available for the Villa game. And the Villa preview, by the way, will be out tomorrow if you want to check that out. I'm recording that just after I do this video. So that moves us on nicely, I think, to the big breaking late news story. So if you're one of those people that watches the first few minutes of this video and you've left, you're going to miss out on some interesting details. The race to get Mohamed Salah over to Saudi Arabia is far from over. I'm not saying Liverpool are going to sell, but I'm not saying Liverpool are not going to sell. Truthfully, I don't know at this moment in time. But here's what's been reported. So Liverpool... Not for sale stance on Mohamed Salah hasn't changed, according to Ben Jacobs. No formal offer has been placed yet either. Saudi dealmakers do still plan to table a massive bid. Sources indicate a 150 million euro package could even be improved to 200 million euro to test Liverpool's resolve. 
Uh, he goes on to say, all are relevant. Liverpool, if Liverpool stick to their position, and no encouragement has been given today to Alithi had, but no doubt Alithi had haven't just walked away. Whether they get Salah or not now, they'll want to make a splash. Salah is said to be calm and focused despite all the headlines. I'm sure he is. Worst case scenario, he leaves and gets one and a half million quid a week. Best case scenario, he stays at Liverpool, continues to be idolised, has a successful season and maybe moves on in the summer. So I can absolutely understand how Mo is calm and relaxed. But here's where I take a little bit of exception. I would like to see Mohamed Salah or his agent come out with a definitive statement on this situation. The longer it goes on, the worse it is for us. And we can't just say the window closes tomorrow at 11 and go like this and let that be the end of it. Because we know the Saudi window stays open until at least the 7th of September, maybe the 20th. Nobody knows which one of those dates are correct. 7th is on the website, on the Saudi FA website, I believe. But the 20th has been mentioned by many prestigious journalists. So either way, they have a bit more time. And the silence from Mohamed Salah's side on this worries me. Look, if Mo goes, it's going to be sad. It's going to be sad for a host of reasons. One, because he won't get the send-off. So however you stand on the Jordan Henderson situation, I think you'll all agree with me that whatever position you take, angry, frustrated, understanding, however, he didn't get the send-off that his tenure and his captaincy of Liverpool Football Club would have deserved. And I don't want the same to happen for Mo. I do understand and appreciate a... I wouldn't even say life-changing. A generation-defining amount of wealth awaits the man should he take the offer. Talk of one and a half million pound a week. Maybe some of that up front. All of it tax-free. Potentially a football club being given to him as part of this deal, I've read as well. And, of course, the adoration of the leadership of that country and of football fans in that area of, of the world. And all of that is understandable. But it would feel really wrong from just to kind of go out the back door and head off and into Saudi best position for everybody would be Mohamed Salah leaves next summer where he gets the farewell at Anfield he gets the adoration of the fans the club get to plan and everybody gets something from it uh, but I really do feel like this is going to be a sticky few days for us because we're not dealing with a football club that will come in and, and have a budget it's more than that, the signing of Mohamed Salah to, for the Saudi League. And I've mentioned this before to you guys as well. There's a real push to get it done in this summer window because of the Club World Cup that's taken place in December. Alithi had are going to be in that competition. And if you're looking at it from the outside and they're trying to build up the Saudi Pro League and they're trying to get the eyes of the world on it, if they could cause an upset and win the Club World Cup by bringing in, let's say, Mohamed Salah, they have N'Golo Kante, Karim Benzema, Fabinho, then that would put Saudi on the map as a destination, as uh, a place where you can come and win the biggest trophies. So I get it from their side, and I'm aware that people will say Liverpool will just keep saying no, 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 but there will come a time where a number may get presented that is just stupid to turn down and that's what makes this whole situation a very sad one for us as fans because no matter what we say there could be a number that will see Mohamed Salah leave and I can sit here and tell you that the club stance is that they're not going to sell but if they go 200 million 220 at what point do Jurgen Klopp and FSG get their heads together and think we could rebuild with some really great players with that money Versus maybe next summer where you might get 70 million for Mo with a year left to go. And I'm not advocating for Mohamed Salah to go. I hope he stays. I hope he's here till the end of this season at a minimum. Because we're a better team with Mohamed Salah in it. But that is the state of play at the minute. That is where we're at. So I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys think and how you feel in the comments section. Nat Phillips today completed a half season long loan to Celtic, weirdly. I'm not sure what will happen in the second half of the season, but he's only signed on for the first half of the campaign. So that has also happened today. And um, yeah, no more outgoings that I'm aware of either. So if you want to join us tomorrow, we will be live from 6 p.m. for Transfer Deadline Day. And again, thank you for all of your continued support. Looking forward to reading your thoughts and comments on these latest stories. So over to you. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.